Have you ever watched a movie and it looks amazing and then you go and pause it to go and get yourself a drink and the whole screen just looks blurry? Sure you have. Well that's because of the shutter speed that was used in that particular scene. Other than our aperture, which dictates our depth of field, shutter speed or shutter angle is one of the main things that goes into creating the aesthetic of our image. We're gonna go through what shutter speed is, what it does, how it affects our image and how we should use it. But first, I think it's important that we mention shutter angle because if you haven't heard about this already, you will no doubt hear about it shortly. They're kind of like Aussies and Kiwis. The same, same, but different. Same, same, but different but still say. Shutter angle stems from the film days where there was a physical wheel that would sit in front of the film and the gap in the wheel would spin around and it would expose the film. This wheel could be adjusted to different angles, meaning there was a larger or smaller gap in the wheel. As that break would pass over the film, it would expose the film from top to bottom and that would get us our image. If you were shooting 24 frames per second, that wheel would spin around 24 times each second. Now today, in the digital day and age, it's still the same process, there's just no mechanical spinny wheel. These sensors are still read out line by line from top to bottom. Shutter angle is a video only feature and it stems from the frame rate in which you're shooting a project. This is still found in all sorts of cinema cameras today, but because most of the hybrid shooters have some sort of a photography aspect, most of these cameras don't actually include shutter angle and therefore we have shutter speed. The need for speed. Shutter angle can be fairly closely replicated with shutter speed, so it's not all bad news, just a little bit of basic math is required. I'll leave a link down below to the formulas you might need to get different angles. So getting back to the aesthetics of our shot and how shutter speed affects that. Remember that blurry pause screen we talked about? Well, that's called motion blur, and the slower your shutter speed, the blurrier your image is. You've no doubt heard of the 180 degree rule. Now this does come from using shutter angle, and that's the shutter angle required to get you the most natural and most cinematic motion blur. This motion blur is gonna be the most similar to what we see with our eyes in a day-to-day -day world. Now, if you wanna follow the 180 degree rule and you have shutter speed on your camera, the easy way to do it is to double your frame rate with your shutter speed. So if you're shooting 24 frames a second, that would be 148th. Now lots of cameras won't let you do 148th, so we're gonna to have to get as close as we can. So 150th will do the trick. We also can't quite double our frame rate when we're shooting in 60 or 120 frames a second. So if you're shooting in 60, you're gonna to wanna to go with 1 125th of a second and 120, 1 250th of a second. So just trying to get as close as we can to doubling our frame rate. So if natural motion blur is so awesome, I should just always shoot at 180 degrees, right? Well, remember in filmmaking, you need to learn the rules to be able to know when to break them. I don't wanna go to school, I just wanna break the rules. Your shutter angle or your shutter speed will give a different aesthetic to your shot. And certain shots and certain scenes call for different looks. If you have something that is high energy and fast paced, it could be sporting, it could be a fight scene, it could be a car chase. These scenes can look quite good with a 90 degree shutter angle. Now, if we're talking about 24 frames a second, that's 1 96th of a second shutter speed. Now, you can't always match that, so normally 1 100th will do the trick. This will take out some of the motion blur and give it a more gritty, punchy sort of fast-paced edge. The faster you push that shutter, the more choppy and edgy it will get. Now, yes, you can absolutely push that too far, so be wary that you don't add too much choppiness to your image. So you always wanna make sure not only are you choosing your shutter speed or your angle correctly, but you're also choosing the appropriate frame rate. A lot of travel influencers videos can seem quite choppy. Now the reason for this is, a lot of them film everything in 120 frames a second. If you're shooting in 120 frames a second at 1 250th of a second shutter speed to get that 180 degree rule, if you're not playing that back in slow motion, you're only displaying every fifth frame, so it's gonna naturally appear a bit choppier. On the other side of things, if we slow the shutter down, we're gonna introduce ultimate blur. Now this can be really good if you're trying to convey a feeling of intoxication or disarray in a character. Something I love to do when I'm not making videos is play the drums and do a bit of a cheeky stick trick. It's fun and it looks awesome. This is also a really cool way to demonstrate motion blur. Right now, we're following the 180 degree rule. This is 24 frames a second with a 1 50th of a second shutter speed. But let's look at some other examples. I'm a tiger, I'm a prowl. I'ma make it go wild. I'm original, and I told you so. I'm a kid in the candy store. With the leather on the denim. I ain't the cure, I'm the venom. If you wanna find me, find the taillight. Something's coming in, you're gonna wanna take a red eye. Time to go. Here's a few scenarios where it makes sense to have a faster shutter speed.
and here's a few times where it makes sense to have a slower shutter speed. I mean, I had skipped the tingle phase and went straight to the drool phase. These little bastards were so strong, I discovered a whole new phase. When you choose a slower or a faster shutter speed for creative reasons, it will affect your exposure, but you shouldn't try and get your exposure by adjusting your shutter speed. Your shutter speed is there to dictate your motion blur. If you're shooting a video and it's the middle of the day, you're shooting at 24 frames a second, 1 50th of a second shutter speed, and f2, there is a strong chance that whole scene is gonna be overexposed. If you wanna dial in that exposure and keep your shutter speed and the aperture the way you want it, the way you're gonna to need to compensate for this is getting an ND filter. Now I've got videos on this topic, so I won't go into it too much right now. So check them out, I'll leave them up here and some down below as well. I've seen people on YouTube and Instagram tell people, don't use an ND filter, just crank the shutter. Don't do it, it looks disgusting, get an ND filter. Some final notes before we wrap up. If I'm shooting slow motion and I'm shooting for a product, sometimes I'll actually shoot at a faster shutter speed because it will make my image appear a lot sharper. Now you want to make sure you still got smooth movement across the screen and it's not all juddery, but that can be something to think about. If you are going to try and crank your shutter to get sharper images, just make sure you practice so you know what you're going to expect with different scenarios. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. If you frequently use things like optical flow or gyro stabilization, having a sharper image with less blur is actually more beneficial for those programs to run at a high degree of accuracy. And once you're done, then you can add some fake motion blur over the top. It'll never look as good as the real thing, but it's, it's not bad. I hope this video has given you a bit more of an understanding of different shutter speeds and shutter angles and maybe help dial your shutter speed in for your next shoot. So that wraps up this video. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a big fat thumbs up and subscribe and do a little bell thing if you haven't already. Unless you make these videos yourself and you upload them, you'll never understand just how badly we all appreciate your sort of support with those sort of things. So thanks for watching guys. My name's Jed. Go listen to Blurry by Puddle of Mud. And I'll see you in this one or that one. Depends. It's a choose your own adventure. Anyway, I'll, I'll see you in one of them. Bye. How cool is this Winnie the Pooh shirt? One of my favorite purchases I've ever made. Here's a few other examples of what motion blur looks like. Oh, sh